lively. <laughs> episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, a 1965 Morris Mini Minor. You know, when I was a kid, I used to see these all over New England. Now they're extremely rare. You, you don't see them at all, especially in this kind of condition. And the fun part is, this is a car that lives maybe five miles from my garage here. I never knew it. It's been here for like 40 years. It's been with the same gentleman that whole time. It's a great story. He bought it as a kid. Let's hear it. Steve Nelson, come on in. Steve, how are you, my friend? I am great, Jay. Hey, how thanks are you? for bringing this. I love this. It's my pleasure. Now, you, you bought this as a teenager, as a kid? Yeah, I was 17 years old. Yeah. Um, very impressionable. Bit of an Anglophile, even yeah. at that point in time. And uh, started combing through the newspaper articles and seeing what was available for sale came across this car. It wasn't my first choice. The first one actually was a 1275S Mark II. Right. Pretty much the car that everyone would have liked to have. But uh, me and mom and dad were a little bit late and we drove up to the gentleman's house and saw the happy new owner walking out with oh, the uh, keys. So yeah, yeah. a bit of desperation set in because you know, when you're that young, you, you have to have the car, sure, right? Sure, sure. So we went over to Westwood and uh, this gentleman had imported several cars, including this one, obviously. And we went and took it for a look. And uh, I said, you know what? I'll go ahead and have the uh, 850. Now, what do you figure you were, the third owner, second owner, fifth owner, or any idea? I don't have any idea, even though I do have a heritage certificate that right. they you fill out the form and you get it and send it back from England and, and the car. Um, was a Bournemouth car, went right. straight to Bournemouth. Mm -hmm. Ken Cook, who I purchased the car from, bought it in Bournemouth, so I'm pretty sure that it stayed in that local area the okay. whole time. As many of us know, a car from England with all that rain gets pretty rusty. <laughs> right, right. Let alone Bournemouth. Let's do a little bit. Alex Isagonis is, of course, a brilliant engineer who designed this. It's 850 cc's, yep. right? Yep. It's front wheel drive. It's mounted transverse with the transmission. Kind of like the Lamborghini Miura sort of copied this idea with their V12. That's right. You know, except it went through the rear wheels. And this was a revolutionary car. This was safe to call it kind of like the Model T of England a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the, the real people's car. They were hugely popular. I mean, the Beatles had them and members of the royal family had them because they were cute and fun and quite fast, right? That's right. Yeah, in yeah, different guises, they got yeah. even faster. The 850 was never known for its speed. It was right. always kind of the, what we might call the shopping mini. You would take right, it right. down to the local store and right. fill her with groceries and go on home. You know, if my wheelbarrow ever needs a new tire, I know where I'm stealing it from. <laughs> what, what's, what size is that? It's not a 12 or 13, it's smaller than yeah, that, right? Yeah, it is. It's a 10 inch diameter. A 10 inch. So getting tires is a little bit tricky. Yeah. Uh, the uh, old Honda N600s had 10 inch wheels. Okay. A little different bolt pattern. Right. But uh, yeah, it's a, a, a 10 inch diameter wheel. These rims that are on here are actually 5 inches wide with right. a 165 70 HR10 tire. The stock size was 145, so a little bit narrower, but right. you know, in building the car, you want it to look a sure. little tougher than, than it did originally. A little more threatening. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. People, oh, hey, back, <laughs> here comes Steve, hey, back away. <laughs> That's a, right. Yeah. Are drum brakes or disc in front? Uh, originally, it came with four-way drums. After driving the car through these years, put about 46,000 miles on it, there were some features in the car I didn't want to repeat. Mm -hmm. One of those were the drum brakes. Right. And even though they were the twin leading shoes, so it had two wheel cylinders sure. per side, they just were a pain. You couldn't keep them um, adjusted. You'd go out and drive it kind of hot on some day or whatever, and you had to come back and adjust the, oh, the brakes okay. immediately. So I wanted to go with disc brakes. So this car, during its rebuild, ended up with the seven and a half inch disc brakes that would have been found on the Cooper S. So this was what, the second car you looked at, would you say? Yes, okay. that is correct, second. Now, year. what kind of shape was it in? Was it, were your eyes bigger than your, than your wallet, so to speak? Oh, I gotta have it, you know? Or, 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 or did you, were you disappointed once you got it home? Was it everything you <laughs> thought it was? Tell us the story. Actually, I could probably say maybe I was so disappointed or nervous to drive it that my dad drove it home. Oh, and I didn't right? even, yeah. yeah, I didn't even drive it till the next day. Well, how come, though, why is that? Yeah, I don't know. I just think I was nervous driving a right-hand drive car and, and uh, 
I didn't want to find out that it would break on the way home, and then it right. would be like, what the heck did I do? Was it in pretty good shape then, or was it pretty rusty? What was the story? It was bad. It was bad, yeah. 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 And, you know, but again, at 17, you don't really know all the ins and outs of cars. It was not this color. It right. was a bronze copper color, right. which I think was really appropriate for the car because it maybe masked some of the rust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, it did pass the MOT, which is a test for in safety England. in England. Yeah. But the way that they get that to do it is not that great. You know, it yeah. had big patch panels in the inner fender wells. Right. It had an over sill, which is like you take the old rusty original sill, and then you throw a bigger sill over that. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. it passes. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah I it gotcha. keeps passing the rust to the new one, too. Okay. So as a kid, did you start restoring it right away, or did you just drive it until something broke, and then you fixed it? Pretty much. You yeah. know, when you're yeah. on a kid's budget, there's not right. a whole lot you could do. The one thing that I did start doing right away was collecting parts, because right. that's relatively cheap. So you, if you found something that was either, well, it wouldn't be online, but if you saw a newsletter or something like that, it had a good price, you picked it up. Because when you get a car, you go through those stages, elation, and then depression, and then, oh God, this is oh, more yeah. than I thought. What made you hold on to it all these years? Was there a point where you just put it in the garage and said, that's it, let me move on to something else, and then you came back <laughs> to it, or were you always enthusiastic for the, what, what have you had it, 40 years? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 40 years, next okay. June. Okay. Um, there definitely ran its, its course of mm -hmm. enthusiasm. When you first got it, it was wonderful. Right. It was my only car, so I had to use it. Right. It had to work. Right. So when things broke, you fixed them, even on a, you know, $5 an hour job that you might have had at right. the time. Sure, sure. But uh, the goal was always to restore it, always to have it look the best that it possibly could. Never had an accident with it. Oh, yeah, I had accidents. Oh, you had yeah. accidents? <laughs> the only, really only one, but it was kind of a crazy one. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Newport Beach um, uh, Back Bay. Right. Okay. At the time, you could drive on it. And right. One time around 1 a.m. in the morning, I was playing rally driver or something and yeah. judged one turn too early. So it went to the, off into the ditch, it hit a bump, shot it all the way onto the other side and off the road and into a small standing yeah, pool of water. Nothing good happens after midnight. Nope. No. no. <laughs> so I smashed in that fender, put yeah. a dent in the roof and needed a recovery tow to get it back home. So did you have it off the road for an extended period? How long did it sit? It sat um, from 1995 to about 2013. Oh, wow. So it okay. was, was off-road for quite some time. Okay. And the reason behind that is one another early morning, about 5 a.m. driving home, I heard a ding, 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 and then the car stopped running. Yeah. And what had happened is one of the exhaust seats in the head had fallen out and shot out the exhaust. So that was pretty much it because okay. it became a three-cylinder 850 right. Mini, which is yeah. not going and anywhere. And what was the stock horsepower when it was new? 34. 34. And what's it got now? Uh, we're guessing around 60. Ooh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's it's uh, earth-shattering. Yeah, near, <laughs> nearly double. No, no, it's a beautiful car. And, and, you know, and you did the smart thing because a lot of people, they give these to climb at the Shell station to work on or something, and, they, and they're learning on your car. Right. You went to our friend Graham Reed. He, he has Heritage Garage. He's sort of our mini expert. You've seen him on this show before. He does a beautiful job restoring these. Just wonderful. And he did this one, didn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, and he, your point is well taken because in the process of collecting estimates and getting an idea of yeah. how much this whole project was going to cost, you could go to just, you know, Joe Schmo at the body shop. Yeah, right. I can do that. But these cars are tricky. I mean, they're small and they're, right. they're pretty simple, but there's a lot of body panels that if you don't really know what you're doing, you're gonna mess it up. Yeah, you always want to go to a specialist when you have a car. You just don't want to go to a body shop. That's right. Uh, I mean, my favorite sign is at a, a shop down the street, and it says, we specialize in all makes of cars. <laughs> well, I don't know how you can specialize in everything. Right. But that just just makes me laugh. Whereas Graham, this is his whole life. I, I'm not sure he can read or do anything else, <laughs> but he knows these cars. He does a beautiful, beautiful job on it. If you have a Mini, he's the guy to see. Let's bring him in. Graham, come on in here. I hate to compliment Graham, but he's very good at what he does. It immediately goes to his head. The sarcasm is free. Right? Yeah, there you go. Sarcasm <laughs> is free. Well, you just did a wonderful job on this. What did you think when you first saw this car? Was it? Did you go, oh, boy. This I, is... I thought it was beyond even bothering about it. Really? Yeah, it was pretty bad. Now, yeah. what did, how did you take that news? I 
kind of expected it um, because it, it really was. You know, the, the fenders were rusty, the sills were rusty, the floors were marginal, and it had dents, the, the drip rails were rusty. Right. But it's just, it's like as I tried to explain to Graham, the, the thing about it is, is it's, it's my first car, I can't get rid of it. Right. He wanted to perhaps reshell it and then transfer things over, but it's like it would lose the essence of what I originally owned. Right. Okay. And I wanted to be a, a savior, as it were, to this, this sure, poor sure. car. Well, let's open the hood. Let's start we there. Can do that. Let's see what we got here. This. So being totally stock was not uh, an, an issue for you, correct? Right. So, That's correct. So you did tasteful modifications. It's the stock block and everything else, correct? Mm -hmm. It's an 850 block. It does have some changes in it. Yeah. So it has a, a steel center strap for a little additional strength. Mm -hmm. it has full cam bearings because the cam was going to be a little hotter and we didn't want it to seize in there. It has 998 Cooper rods mm -hmm. and the 998 Cooper cylinder head. Okay. Now the big challenge with all this mix, which I had read about as a kid through David Vizard's book, was that, yes, this can be done, but the big problem is getting the compression ratio high enough. Yeah. And the stock pistons were like split skirt pistons, so it's just, it's like, well, you don't want to run those and have them shatter. So with Graham's help, we ended up having custom made one-off 850 pistons by Ross Racing in, in uh, California and we got the compression ratio up where it needed to be because that is the big what challenge. What is the compression ratio? It's about nine and a quarter. Okay, right so it now. runs on premium. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, originally did they have two SUs? No, it was a single one right, and a quarter that's what I SU. Thought. Okay. So when I bought this car, it came with a box load of parts, which it needed. Yeah. And included in that were these carburetors, which are twin one and a quarter SUs from, if you look up the numbers on them, from a 998 Cooper. I love any car where the carburetors are bigger than the head. It just, <laughs> it just makes me laugh. It's like a guy with a giant head and exactly. a little body. You know? It's funny. <laughs> now, is this the stock block color, the green? Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, that looks that looks really nice. I, I kind of remember that, but I didn't know if that was factory. And of course, the plastic yellow fan, that's the way they came. That's right. And of course, the Mini it was so innovative in its day with the radiator off to the side. Nobody ever thought to do that, you just put it in the front because that's mm -hmm. where the airflow was. And, and the fact that the packaging in these cars is what's really amazing. You can be six foot four and drive this thing no problem because everything is right up here. You know, normally you're going this way with transmission and everything, so you, and you sit with your feet off to the side, you know, whereas this thing, it, it's like a full size sedan inside. That's kind of the fun part about mm -hmm. it. Right now, so okay, and you've got your giant generator down there. Is that a generator or alternator? It really is a generator. That was one of those questions that we had putting this together. It's like, go with an alternator. We can scrap the guts in the generator and make it look like a generator. It's like, I never really had a problem keeping the car charged when I'm driving, so it's yeah. the generator. We have a guy named Don Allen. He does a thing called a generator. He takes your generator, turns it into an alternator. So externally, it looks totally stock. Right. But it's an alternator, and I've done it to a bunch of my cars, and it's just fantastic because I've got my cord, and every time you come to a light, the lights would dim and the radio would go off, you know, and then you got to rev it, get in the light would come on, you got to rev it, keep it. And he just took my stock core, put an alternator inside it, can't tell the difference. So, pretty the cool. Boxes of parts that Steve showed up with at the <laughs> shop, though, was what was pretty spectacular. He'd been collecting for 40 years. Right. So when you start showing up with a new old stock cylinder head that he paid 50 bucks for, that I'd give 500 for today. Right. And there were boxes and boxes and boxes because in his travels to England, he was raking the swap meets or boot sales and bringing back what would now be the holy grail of parts. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it got kind of crazy for a while because it has this process went forward and I realized gee, these guys down at Heritage can really make this car look like right. I never dreamed about. Now it was like trying to find Lucas parts with the correct date stamp that was close to right. when the car was produced. It got a little nuts. Now, Mini Minor is sort of rare, isn't it? Here in America, we always just hear the words Mini Cooper or Mini right. Cooper S. This was, I'm, I'm trying to think what the equivalent would be in America, would this be like the six cylinder to Mustang compared to the Shelby Mustang? You know what I'm saying? No, I think what happened with the introduction of the Mini, as you pointed out before, how unique they were, I think they were concerned about selling it to the public, frankly. Mm -hmm. So I think when they introduced the cars in 1959, 
The Austins, they called an Austin 7, which was a takeover from the old Austin 7. Right. And then Minor, they've used Minor in this because I think they were trying to keep people thinking this is a continuation of two loved cars. Right. Then after a couple of years, when it became a car in its own right, all that went away. The Minor got dropped, the 7 got dropped, and okay. they became Minis because... Okay. But I think it was a marketing tool. I, I'd right. have to believe that it was just a matter of trying to convince the public this is the same old car we sold you in 58. Well, the thing I find fascinating, Alex Indigonis was one of these innovative engineers, but like a quirky guy. He didn't like radios. He didn't think you should listen to the radio while you're driving. You should pay attention. So you couldn't get one with a radio. So dealers were like, they had to sell the car, and they had to go somewhere else to get... To get a, a radio to put in it, which is, just sort of makes me laugh. Standard, it's a four-speed transmission, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, okay. and this one was updated a little bit because uh, it originally had a crash first gear, so no synchronizer in first. Right. And that was another one of those items driving the car for those miles where it's like, yeah, it would be kind of nice to have a synchronizer in first. Right. So that was added in. And then the other piece is the remote gear change. So that's more like a Cooper S or what right. they all Now, normally got. the gear change is up yeah, it was like coming up from the center part of the yeah, floor, yeah, yeah. called a pudding stir, I yeah, believe. That's, yeah, the English, yeah. Magic yeah. wand. Yeah, magic wand. And no roll-up windows, just sliding windows. Oh, yeah, very practical. Right. Okay. <laughs> and these were very inexpensive in England at the time, I mean, compared to other English cars, weren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think it was maybe 800 pounds or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, it's just beautiful. Thank you. Do you have this on the back as well? No, I just the mini fin drum aluminum brakes. Oh, okay, okay. All right, let's see. And, but it's actually quite roomy, isn't it? Let's see. Yeah, we can close the hood here. This is sort of a process for me. I'm so leery of chipping the paint or I noticed that like. the distributor is right in front. Uh -huh. You think for water, that would be a problem. Yeah, it can be. Um, yeah. They sold a, a, a rubber sleeve that would go yeah. over. That would help. But I don't have to worry about this, because this has never seen rain. Really, yeah, now, but. yeah. Let's go to the back of the vehicle here. Let's take a look at the boot or the trunk, as we call it. And it's a pretty good size. Look at that. You got a couple of suitcases in there, a couple of golf bags. Sure, and the, the other thing about these trunks, I don't know when they would do it because it was raining all the time, but they would drive with the trunk lid down Why? so you could get a little extra carrying oh, capacity. Sure. And then this license frame would swing down oh. so you would be in uh, compliance with the local constables. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Was that a factory thing or is mm -hmm. that something people, okay. Yeah, well, that was factory. And how, how many gallon gas tank? Six and a half. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it gets, you know, over 30 miles a gallon, sure, so sure. it's not bad. And um, this car, the 850, just had the single tank, whereas right. the Cooper S's had the twin tanks. Originally, it was an option on the Cooper S, and then later it became Twin standard. fillers as well? Yeah. And you had to fill them separately, or mm -hmm. did they? Oh, that's yeah, no crossover. Oh, no, yeah, that's crazy. It's it? yeah. a little crazy. So, Graham, let me ask you, but this comes to your shop, and obviously, if this was a Lamborghini or Ferrari, then the value of the vehicle, of course, is not going to be exceeded by the restoration. But on something like this, <laughs> How difficult it is to tell a customer, oh boy. Like, was, was this shell pretty much gone when you got it? I went, in fact, I didn't even let him bring it to the shop. I yeah. went and looked at it here in Burbank. Yeah. And when I walked in to take a look at it, it was a matter of, really? Are you sure you want to do this? Right. It was pretty bad. And initially, we were going to do the body work and the metal work, and Steve was going to take the rest of it and do it himself. But uh, it was so bad that I had another shell at the shop, same era, actually the same color that I suggested we might want to start a little closer to zero. But he said this was his car and had been his car and this was one he wanted to build. So we, we took it on with the understanding it was going to be a big project. But right. sometimes that's not the reason people do restorations. They do it for the passion, they do it for the right reasons, and yeah, Steve yeah. was one of these people. Yeah. And, and as long as you go into it with your eyes wide open, I think that's all I can do professionally, is make sure they understand it, they're not going to have regrets halfway through. And you're an auto technician by trade, correct? Uh, actually, I work at American Honda, right? and I'm in their service technical operations okay. group. So what we're basically doing is looking at everything that breaks on the car right. and trying to get a speedy fix. Sure, sure. So there is some knowledge with mechanics and so on and so forth. And it, it does make it easier when you're dealing with a car guy right. because at least there's a level of understanding when you run into obstacles and you have things that crop up along the way. 
they, they get it. They, you can explain things, send photographs, documentation, yeah. and that's important. Because people watch these shows where they restore cars. You know, I had, I won't mention her, uh, a famous <laughs> person who wanted to get her husband uh, a classic car. She said, he wanted done by his birthday. And I said, uh, well, yeah, I think, when's his birthday? She goes, Thursday? I go, okay, <laughs> you can't really, right. it, you can't paint a car. It takes a long time. You know, <laughs> you know you're talking about a year. She's a year? Oh, gosh. So how many hours in doing this show? I am not even sure. Yeah. It, it, was, it was a labor of love for, for yeah. Steve. And as we progressed, he came down and saw it in the, the saw it in the, once we got the paint off, it right. was even worse than it was with the paint on. Right, and right. He's right. The brown paint was holding other brown stuff together. Um, but the, the thing was to get the thing structurally solid. And as I said, he showed up with parts that were interesting because the dyes that were made for using fenders and things that he'd picked up parts decades ago, the, the edges were far crisper than the ones we even buy today from the same supplier yeah. because the molds are becoming worn and tired. Sure. So it was, a, it was a great project to do. It was a very rewarding project to do because of the understanding that we were going to take this all the way and just keep the 850. There was enough quirkiness in the build that just made it interesting to do. And I think the end Is result... Is this one of the hardest you've had to do? Yes, yeah. it was. We've done another one since that was equally as challenging, but this had way more rust. The second one was more accident related. As Steve said, things like the rockers are structural in these cars. Right. As they are with most cars. It's not a chassis car, it's a monocoque with two sub assemblies. So the middle of the car has to be strong. It can't just be, you know, bondo and duct tape, which it was before. Right. Um, so we cut out huge sections of the car and put in uh, pieces to give the car. The car looks as good bare as it does with the paint on it. And there's no chassis per se in this, correct? It's all unibody, right? Well, it's a unibody with two sub-assemblies. Okay. So the sub-assemblies do drop out remotely and they carry all the suspension components, but they have to have a body to mount into. Right. So the back of the rockers are where the front of the rear suspension tie in, and then all the front nose is all the sub-assembly. And I guess most of the rust and corrosion was while it was in England, correct? Because right. here in California, you're, you're fine. Yeah, it was pretty good, except every time that I drove it, because then I had to drive it in the rain, right. I would have to also come home and pull all the carpets out and hang them out to dry and really? bail out. Yeah, it leaked like a sieve <laughs> because there were there were holes in the upper part of the, the fender area, so the wheel would kick it up and it would just right. drain right down inside the car. So. Yes, most of the rust was from England, but it continued to rust. And did they have the two multicolored taillights? Is that later? Um, this would be for a, a UK or European spec car. So in '65 they did yeah. have orange and oh, okay, because yeah. that looks it looks so modern now. Mm -hmm. You know, I would assume they were just a red taillight because it's 1965. But in England they were mm -hmm. orange and red lights. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. the difference of this car versus a US spec car is the front turn signals are also orange. They would oh, okay. be clear here and then the parking light would also be used for that turn signal. Here the parking light is in the headlight. Well let's go to the interior. So that's a custom steering wheel as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you added the tachometer obviously. That's correct. And the spinometer went to what? About 190? What 190. No, just, <laughs> just 90. 90. Yeah, and that's, that's a unique to the 850. The Cooper S, I think, was 120 maybe okay. or so. Is that in miles per hour or kilometers? Miles per hour. Oh, okay. I'll yeah, go. UK is, is on the miles per hour. Oh, that's hour. right. Of yeah. course. Yeah, of course. That's right. And, and 90 with an 850 is downhill with a tailwind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that would be pretty <laughs> tough. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's take it for a spin. Have fun. <laughs> Uh, that seat might need a little adjustment for you. That's all right, but, but the door opens nice and wide. Oh, yeah. Kind of step into it. Oh, yeah, the seat could go back a little yeah, bit. It's got the towel bar. Might be a little stiff. Let me see. Oh, yeah, let, me get, let me get my leg in. <laughs> Hang on. See how I get in this thing here. There we go. All right. Can I get my knee around the way out? You've got all kinds of room. <laughs> Tons of room. Could wear a big cowboy hat. Sounds quite good, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, not like it used to sound in the old days. I got the brake on here. There we go. Now it does have a light, lightweight flywheel. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's almost like driving It's so much fun to drive. Now. Yeah, there we go.
You know, on this show, we're always trying to find unique driving experiences. Uh -huh. And then you see why these were fun. I mean, it is funny that, like I said before, royalty had them. The royal, you know, members of the royal family sure. loved them. The Beatles had them. Yep. The average person had them. I think Twiggy, you remember her? She was sure. the big fashion model of the 60s. She had one. It was like that whole Carnaby Street. Then, of course, you had that movie, The Italian Job, yeah. with all the minis in it, which just really cemented the yeah, whole. it's an awesome film. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't tried any of those maneuvers in this car, but uh -huh. I think they could be. Well, the handbrake turns are always fun. <laughs> She goes quite good, doesn't she? Uh -huh. You yeah. find yourself thinking, I don't want to take it, it's too nice now? Uh -huh. Yeah. I know that's terrible and sacrilege, but you look underneath the car and it's like completely clean. And you're going like, man, that's like five hours worth of work every time I oh, drive yeah, it. Yeah. But I think too much effort's gone into it to not use it. And do these have the rubber suspension? Uh I'm glad you brought that up yeah. because originally they, the cars, original early minis had the rubber cones. Right. And then this car had the hydroelastic, right. which started in 64. And then uh, this car, when I redid it, it was like, you know what? Those pieces, the displacers aren't available and it will be my luck that'll put it all back together and they'll lose the pressure. Right. So we went ahead and used a coil spring oh, suspension. Okay. So it has coils and shocks. And yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. And it more than keeps up with modern traffic. I think so. take this up the crest. I know, that absolutely. You know, the roads are so beautiful up there. They're so smooth, yep. there's no traffic, and it's really perfect. The horn even worked. Nice, huh? <laughs> it's amazing how many cars guys restore, and I go, oh yeah, I didn't hook that up. <laughs> but, you know, people are so anxious to go out and drive the car, that they get to hook up the horn. Yeah, you don't want to get into collisions, so it's yeah. probably good to have. Pretty much the original horn as well. Yeah. It's a remanufactured horn. I kind of would like to see if I can get the original horn yeah. restored. But I still can, got it? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. yeah. The seatbelts, too, that they had original seatbelts were the Kangol magnetic type. Yeah. Kind of had like a hook and you just sort of tension held you in. But right, right. These are awfully nice. Well, the fun thing about these cars is the sensation of speed. Yeah. Like on the speedometer, 50 is where 60 normally would be, and it's, you know, right. straight up and yeah, down. that's true. So you just, oh, so you just go 50. Yeah. Is that the stock exhaust system? No, it's a uh, larger bore, all stainless. So you have a, a sport sort of system. Yeah. We've been in this area. Really? Uh-uh. You grew up here, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you never know, you're, we're, we're three miles from the shop. <laughs> How could you never be here? I don't know. Just it, sort of was the, the the scary north or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. You know, the jaggedness of the mountains and everything. It's just like, well, that's pretty wild. I'm going to have to come back into this Yeah, area. I mean, your house is like right over there. Yeah. So You've been of, up to the crest, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Many I, times. I mean, in, in this car, even. Yeah, was, uh, not now, but yeah. in the old days. Yeah. When I should have been worried about right. taking it up there. Drove it up there one time and lost the generator. Oh. But luckily the battery was fully charged. I was able to make it home. Yeah. The car's definitely seen its fair share of shenanigans. Yeah. The old ridge route ended up over there one time too. Doesn't pull left or right. Drives very nicely. It's great. Comparing it to modern cars, it does seem like it could use a fifth gear. You know, when you don't have a lot of power and you don't have a lot of torque, you don't want to keep yeah. adding gears. Yeah, yeah. So what did this car cost new back in 79? You didn't buy it new, you bought it second hand. Uh, it was around $1,400. And what was the guy asking? About that. I mean, I wasn't... So you drive a hard bargain is what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might have gotten some deals on the parts, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got a buddy of mine like that. The car was fifteen hundred. I said, "What'd you pay?" He said, oh, fourteen ninety-five. Oh, you got to knock off five bucks. I mean, you know, he was so intimidated. Oh, really? Well, you're quite a businessman. You know? 
you find you have to con constantly explain to people, it's not a Mini Cooper S, oh, it's, a, it's a Morris Mini Minor. They go, what, 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 yeah, what, no. what? Yeah, growing up, it was like, what kind of car do you have? Morris Mini Minor. Oh, I know one of those, Morris Minor. Right. Oh, it's like a Mini Cooper. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does sound like some kind of hand puppet. A Morris Mini Minor, I don't yeah, know. Well, it is kind of cartoon, Mike. That's probably why BMW never tried to sell the Mini One here and just went yeah. straight to the yeah. straight to the chase and call it a Mini Cooper. Right, right. Probably as powerful as a Mini Cooper S, isn't it? It's just about the same. Yeah. So yeah, but it's funny because you constantly have to explain to people. Why well, you say I went to see a Mini Cooper S? And, yeah. and you're always making that explanation. You know? Exactly. This is the sort of roads this car was made for. Absolutely. You can, the you lanes. Can, yeah, for lanes. You can bomb through 50 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Seems cool. like you're going 100. Exactly. Because the sensation of speed is as much fun as the speed itself. You know? Right. school in England, this is what your fourth grade teacher would have driven. Absolutely. Yes. This is Ellis or something. You know? Yeah, exactly. Well, Steve, thanks for saving this piece of history. It's really great to see that your dedication to preserving it is really wonderful. But you just don't see these anymore. No. And of course, I want to thank Graham Reed at uh, Heritage. He does a wonderful job. If you've got one of these minis, get his website and give him a call because he just does does beautiful work as this car will attest. Drives nice. And, uh, now you got to get out and drive it now. It's so nice now. You see, I'm, I'm trying to shame you into getting on the road with this thing. Well, I think the biggest shame is you've driven it more than I have. Well, so there I'm you go. Right. Well, yeah. well, we should continue that. You leave with me and I'll put the miles on it. Yeah, Steve, thank go. you very much, my Steve, friend. Thank you. Thanks again. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>